Hi, welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Be Healthy Summit and welcome Lee Yen Anderson. Thank you. It's my honor to be here. Thank you for taking the time. Lee Yen Anderson is the founder of the Sensible Tribe, a global organization of 25,000 members who are thriving in lifestyles that honor the earth and all living beings. She's a certified raindrop technique specialist, a licensed spiritual healer, a nutrition consultant, a yoga teacher, and an aroma yoga teacher. She holds a master's degree in international environmental policy from UCSD and a Bachelor of Business Distinction in Economics and Finance from RMIT University, Australia. So, Lian, can, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? What's your background? So, I grew up in Malaysia. And I had always been a very driven person, knowing that I was going to be successful in no matter what I did. And I was naturally um, funneled into a career that involved um, finance. When I was there, I realized how unhappy I was and how my true passion lied in um, in that moment, it was all about saving the earth. And I figured out a way to marry my um, economics and finance um, experience with my passion to save the earth. And so I went ahead and did a master's degree in environmental policy. And my passion back then was really to um, formulate economic policy that would uh, lead to sustainable development, especially for women and children in developing countries. And so I had an internship at a United Nations development program, and I was all set to become a bureaucrat in the, um, in the world of nonprofit organizations. Uh, well, life happened, and I had uh, children and what really uh, woke me up to the myriad of health issues I had that I had totally ignored until my son started showing signs of food intolerances. There was a time in his life when he wouldn't step out of the house without first knowing where the first uh, restroom stop was going to be. Um, whenever he arrived at a new place, he would ask you know, where the bathrooms were. And then we got calls from the school um, asking what was going on because he was spending a lot of time in the bathroom. So it was a lot of digestive issues and diving deep into um, finding out what was going on with him, I realized that a lot of the, the symptoms I had been dealing with and ignoring um, because of my zeal to, to help others instead of myself, uh, I realized that actually a lot of what I was going through was uh, food intolerances and just very low immune system as a result of not living um, in a way that honors my body and my emotional state because I was also a very stressed out uh, road rage driver in California at that time. I started investigating how food impacts our body and with that um, knowledge, I helped us, I think, to get us to about 75% better. I was dealing with um, a lot of skin issues, hives, eczema, um, low immune system issues, coughing chronically, um, falling ill a lot, uh, back aches, chronic back aches, and joint aches even, uh, and just digestive issues. So. Uh, alternating between constipation and diarrhea and um, all the, the signs that showed something was not right. So, so getting ourselves to about 75% uh, well, diving into nutrition, signing up for a nutrition um, consulting course, I realized that uh, when I was introduced to essential oils, that that was really the missing link in that um, our connection to the plant kingdom allowed for the, the harmony of our cells and our bodies. And that led to 
me really finding um, true peace uh, within my emotional, mental, and spiritual state, as well as um, confidence in knowing that whatever um, comes our way, I have a toolbox that I can um, use. And so I was also doing yoga then because of my, um, I guess I, it just really, really helped me with my stress. And I found that I actually really loved it. So I became a yoga teacher. And then lo and behold, realized that essential oils and yoga is such an amazing um, partnership. And so I started teaching. Um, well, first I got certified in aroma yoga. And then I started teaching. And the, what I teach now, I call it sensible yoga. And it's S-C-E-N-T. S I B L E. And really, my um, perspective is that it is an awakening of our senses as a path to presence. And once we um, start becoming aware of our body, it's very much a, um, a realization of how, our intel how intelligent our body is, and all the senses lead us to really this deep knowing of, um, you know, what's the next best step we need to take for our health, for our, um, the, the manifestation of really what we're here to do. So that's in a short synopsis. That's where I'm at today. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Leanne, I would love to dive with you into the topics of chakras and essential oils. What are chakras and how can you use essential oils to strengthen the chakras? So I first have to give you a little bit of background of what essential oils are and how it actually works within our body. So as you know, um, as you may know, essential oils come from plants. It can be um, distilled from any part of the plant, from the root, the bark, the tree itself, the, the branches, the leaves, the flowers. And um, it has, in, in the way that I use it, um, the essential oil has to be um, grown in a way that respects its um, inner life force. So what we have in a bottle is this vibrant, energetic substance that is really captured uh, from uh, the plants um, themselves. And so it has to be distilled with just the right temperature, very little pressure, the right um, type of container, uh, not any contaminant added or um, even when it was grown. And very importantly, it has to be imprinted with um, love and a sense of respect and reciprocity. So with every um, step of the way until the bottle gets into our hand, it has to be um, seen as this relationship we have with the plant and, and a sense of stewardship of the plant's um, use uh, for our benefit. And so this relationship is very much um, part of um, what I teach with yoga because as we inhale the essential oil, we are really inhaling it with gratitude and reverence. And it, the plants are not just a resource for us. Um, they are really meant for us to be building a relationship with them so that when they thrive, we thrive, right? And it's a reciprocal relationship. So in a scientific way, how the essential oils then, uh, with its full, um, as much of its uh, range of compounds as possible coming out of um, the plant, these compounds are numerous in the hundreds, and we could never uh, attempt to replicate it in the lab. We can also never attempt to really explain what it does in our body, but as an analogy, um, I can imagine it like a song. 
So every essential oil is like a song with different frequencies in the bottle. When we inhale it or when we put it topically, it enters our body and we have um, millions of receptor sites all over our body that requires a specific key to unlock those receptor sites in order to start the cascade of um, action. And that action can be to cleanse the, the cell, to reprogram the cell, um, or to give it instruction to perform its function. Now, so that means that every essential oil from a different plant has a, a different frequency and it and even within each essential oil it has those different frequencies that will go where it needs to if you can imagine um even uh all the messengers in our body including hormones and um what we call ligands they are singing this song throughout the body and they are finding the harmonious attachment that they are attracted to when they find it and when they get there then they unlock the possibility so as we inhale it goes up to a limbic region of our brain and that is where uh, our memory our emotions are stored and that is another amazing way that essential oils help our emotional release and helps us to relax and to uh, just sort of come back to our essence before our programming of different emotional trauma within us. So the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual um, aspects of essential oils is really um, how we're experiencing it. And as we do yoga with that, then we are, um, subconsciously reprogramming ourselves uh, without having to use our willpower or, or any sort of judgment about where we're at, at and where we need to go. So uh, the chakras being the energetic centers of our body have their own um, personality, if you will. That personality is uh, expressed either as um, in harmony or imbalanced, right? Could be too much or too little. So as we go up the chakras, uh, I will uh, explain a little bit more about that. But as an overall view, the chakras are, uh, if you will, in the areas of our body that also correspond to our endocrine glands. And, um, you know, there, there are three ways, uh, three communication pathways in our body. We have the nervous system, the endocrine system, and then the cytokine system. So actually, in all three of those uh, ways that our body communicates, essential oils can affect those ways. So let's just focus on the endocrine system for now because we, as, as the endocrine glands, um, so the root chakra is at the base of our spine and it is connected to uh, what we call our gonads, so our, our sexual organs. And those are the endocrine glands there. The sacral chakra is just below the navel and that is connected to our um, adrenal glands. The solar plexus chakra is just at our solar plexus region, and that is connected to pancreatic functions and glands. The heart chakra, the heart can, can sometimes be considered a gland. Um, it can also be considered uh, our thymus gland here. And the throat chakra is connected to our thyroid gland. The third eye is, um, for our purposes, there, there are a few different interpretations out there, but I would say it's connected to our pineal gland. And then um, the crown chakra connected to our pituitary gland, which is also known as our, um, our master gland that um, really uh, affects all the different glands in the body. So as we use the essential oils, um, 
with our yoga, we are then um, able to use the oils that we have found throughout history. Essential oils have been used for over 2,000 years, and there are more and more scientific research that are um, produced every single year on the different um, effects of the essential oils. So we can take the essential oils that are going to be beneficial to those specific endocrine glands and um, conversely, well not conversely, but additionally, we can also choose essential oils that affect the emotional component, as I spoke about the, the personalities of those chakras. So today I will give you one of each for each chakra. Awesome. Looking forward to that. <laughs> so shall I go right ahead to the root chakra? Yes, please. Okay. So the root chakra is connected to the element of earth. Earth is a little denser than, I mean, it's, it's a dense uh, feeling soil and groundedness and this is where we start because we build our foundation uh, from the bottom up the color red is associated with the chakra so many times when we uh, meditate on this chakra we would uh, imagine the color red at the base of our spine and as we do that we are tapping into the frequency of this chakra because all colors are a different frequency. The essential oil, um, and, and this is just a subset of all the essential oils I would choose. So today I would, I would say I would use vetiver, which is a, um, a grass that is grown and it has a very grounding and earthy um, scent to it. And it's also a little bit thick. And that viscosity is, um, again, reflective of that groundedness and density of the earth uh, root chakra. And so when I use vetiver, I would uh, always put a drop on, my left, on the left palm of the students and um, the left side of the body being the receiving side. When I put a drop on it, I ask them to circle it around three times clockwise. And again, it's that reverence of using it. We're activating it um, just the way our proteins and our DNA um, circle around its clockwise. And I, I would ask them to hold it up to their face. Sometimes um, some students want to really put it up to their nose. Sometimes they have it a little further away, depending on their own um, affinity with that essential oil. And then I would go through a few different uh, sun salutations. Now, the earth root chakra helps us when it's balanced to feel safe, to feel secure. And the, the negative um, expression of that would be fear and a sense of lack. So when we feel safe in this world and taken care of, then we're not so worried about um, when our next meal is going to come or if we can pay our bills. We, we do our work in uh, staying completely present and trust that when, when doors open for us, we are actually present enough to be able to see it and take the step through to our uh, next level of um, expression of our gifts in this world. So part of feeling safe is really cultivating a sense of trust. So when um, we are using vetiver to ground ourselves, it is actually working with our, um, in this case, our um, gonads, uh, sexual organs, and we are feeling the sense of support by the earth. And so as we go through our sun salutations, we are actually repeating this sense of security. And 
in so in the massage world there is this saying of um you know we don't do things just once uh, we do it at least three times so the first time the body is a little bit um surprised it's a little bit shocked at it the second time it is starting to open up to that that uh, re repetition but the third time is when our nervous system just allows it, expects it, and knows what's coming next. And, and that's when we start to trust. So trust is, um, is something that needs to be cultivated. And so as we cultivate trust on our yoga mat, it is translating into our ability to trust uh, stressful situations or fear, uh, scary situations in the world. We're using our breath um, as we inhale, we're reminding ourselves that the breath is a really useful technique for slowing down our um, fight or flight uh, system. And the other uh, aspect of the earth chakra and, and the essential oil I would choose is uh, black spruce. So when we choose um, the essential oils that are big tall trees that are perennial and i'm sorry they're evergreen uh, that means they're just all year round so rooted into the ground and they can withstand many of them the strong winter storms that come uh, in fact we use a lot of the spruce and firs and um, to bring into a house during the Christmas season in order to remind us that um, we're safe even in the dark of the winter night. And, and that scent as we walk in with the Christmas tree is, is really grounding to the body. So, so in um, addressing the energetic part of our root chakra, then uh, using the black spruce essential oil as we go through um, a lot of the poses in yoga that um, helps to ground us is uh, mostly all of it because we're either standing or using our hands so we're always on the earth but it is that awareness of standing there and allowing say all our fear to go through our feet into the ground um, and understanding that the processes of um, the earth is very much relevant to our lives as well. So the earth takes in compost, which is what we don't need, what we don't want, junk, um, toxins, and it beautifully transforms it into soil that is nourishing to our plants. So as we visualize um, I'll say, let's say we're in downward facing dog. Both our hands are on the ground, our feet is on the ground, and we're visualizing this uh, release of what we don't need into our feet. And through our hands, we're visualizing taking in the nutrients of the soil, just like as if these were our roots. Uh, so, so that's the root chakra. <laughs> so beautiful how you describe it. What about the next one? Yes, so just with every, um, everything in our lives, once we have a nice foundation, then we can start to have fun. We can start to be creative. We can start to really be so present um, as to see the creative solution out of any perceived obstacle or problem. The sacral chakra is represented by the element water. And water is not one to be stopped by any obstacle. As it flows down uh, into the ocean, um, it comes across caves. Uh, I mean, it's even making caves through the mountains. It comes across boulders, but it finds a way through. It may come across the cliff, but it just becomes a beautiful waterfall. You know, so if we imagine ourselves being the water that goes every way and finds creative solutions, because ultimately we get to the sea, um, 
then we start to see life as uh, just this fun, creative puzzle that has these clues and hints and metaphors all around for us to uh, decipher and to tap into really our inner knowing because sometimes it's not really to decipher using our brain, right? Um, so the sacral chakra is also corresponding to our adrenal glands. If I were to use an essential oil to um, boost my um, adrenal glands and uh, support, say, the kidney and the bladder and all of that there, um, I would choose juniper. Juniper is an essential oil that is really beneficial to our kidney function. And on a physical level, uh, we want the circulation of our fluids to be uh, not sluggish, right? To, to go smoothly so that we can be uh, like water. And the other essential oil I would use for the energetic personality of this chakra is orange. So the color of this chakra is orange. The frequency is one of fun and, and citrus essential oils have that quality to them that almost reminds us of childhood and, and that child we once were that had no cares in the world and was just so creative in coming up with games and, and um, we laughed and we, we had fun, right? So orange essential oil really uh, matches that frequency in us. Now, if this, is, this chakra was imbalanced, then we would be, um, it would be hard for us to find our way through our obstacles. We would be stuck in our um, judgments or um, the feeling of the emotional trauma that has come uh, into our lives. So we would hold on to those and replay the story over and over in our head with very little space for anything new or um, anything that would help us to get out of it. So here lies uh, somewhat of that victim consciousness of um, a person that believes that they um, have been given all these bad things in their lives. So to allow that victim consciousness to come out of that and to become more of a um, creator, we, Act, we, we practice the hip opening poses here. So you can imagine um, a pigeon pose um, where we are opening up the hips. A lot of the emotions are stored there. And we, we use um, either juniper or orange on that area. And as we inhale, you know, um, having affirmations is also really helpful, I've found to um, clarify to our subconscious what we are um, intending. So it could be as simple as, I am the creator of my life, or I, I have fun every day, or my kidneys are working perfectly. Short, simple uh, affirmations that are in the present tense that uh, re- enforce within ourselves why we're doing what we do. So we open up our hips. We can also be um, in other poses such as the goddess pose, you know, just really uh, opening up and being uh, receptive. And so part of, of this chakra too is, is that receptive nature of uh, water. It will become whatever uh, vessel it is put in and uh, it has no form of its own unless uh, you know put into a vessel so becoming a receptive vessel for however we're meant to be um, expressed in in this lifetime uh, and accepting it and being the creator too of it so it's it's both being receptive and creative 
Um, so the sacral chakra is one that is very much about our relationship to others. And when we can um, start to move away from, from judgment of how one other person is speaking to us or is saying anything about us and understand that everyone is going through their own challenges and what they're expressing may be and most likely is an expression of what they are experiencing in their own lives and has really nothing much to do with you. You're just maybe a mirror reflecting um, a trigger for them. So there's a lot of uh, self-growth happening in this part of the, the chakra. And uh, in our yoga poses, we talk a lot about, so for instance, if we're in warrior two, um, one, one analogy I like to give people is what we want our torso right above our hips. And in warrior two, if, if someone is leaning too far back, then they're a warrior living in the past. And if they're uh, leaning too far forward, then they're a warrior living in the future. So we want them to be completely present, which is right above the hips. And we work on opening the hips, and that may take a while. Um, but essentially, they are expressing this desire to be a peaceful, receptive uh, manifestation of a present spirit. And uh, that expression then allows their subconscious to um, just really then start to even um, in their everyday lives understand that um, they have a choice uh, with their own response to whatever uh, is around them, whatever chaos, whatever um, fearful event or uh, judgmental event or the, the idea of being betrayed or uh, gossiped about, they have the responsibility for their own response. And hopefully that response comes more naturally as they're aware of their own power. Mm, wonderful. I love your descriptions. So beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so what about the next one? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. We move on to our solar plexus chakra, uh, Manipura, which is represented by the element fire. So once we're really grounded and we feel safe, and then we can start to play and we're creative and, and we're no longer suspicious of you know, other things out there trying to get us, then we can move into the space of um, core power, core knowingness and it is a place of simultaneously taking action and being um, completely authentically ourselves and being present. The color here is yellow and yellow is um, actually a color that a lot of um, retail stores would love to have on their signs or their doors because it, it propels people to take action. And so if you want someone to buy, right, you, you color your store yellow. Um, so the frequency around that is um, one of confidence, yet uh, acting from a place of humility, imbalance. The essential oil I would use here is um, going to be beneficial for the digestive system. So this is the pancreatic gland, uh, the pancreas, and it's the digestion, it's the, um, the fire, right, of the agni, that, that when we eat, um, it is all digested and what we take in, we absorb. Um, but it's also then fuel for our purpose. 
So if you can imagine um, coriander being the essential oil I would choose here. Coriander has been used for thousands of years and it is amazing for our digestion. And when we inhale it here and also put it topically around this area, we get this sense of um, lightness. When you are digesting your food well, you feel this sense of freedom and sense of lightness. It, when you are, um, say, constipated and all the food is getting stuck in your intestines, you're going to feel sluggish. You're going to have this sense of feeling heavy and stuck. So that idea of stuckness is what we want to push through here. And physically, it is about letting go of uh, the digested food. So coriander is amazing here. And uh, the other essential oil I would use is peppermint. Peppermint is one that will help us to, to again, take action. And it is also a really great system. Uh, but it is propelling us to do what's right for us, what's right for our authentic self. And so the, the yoga poses here I would uh, go cycle through would be the twisting and core uh, strengthening pose. So as we twist our body, uh, we are in, in some yogic literature, we are wringing our intestines and, and temporarily uh, slowing down the blood flow. And when we do that, we are creating a, a little bit of a stress so that there's this, again, this ability to move forward when we release it. So when we come out of the twist, uh, there is this sense of release and reinvigoration of the blood flow and hopefully taking the toxins out. So there are a number of um, twisting poses we can do here and I usually cycle through them as well as uh, core strengthening poses which could be in the form of a chair pose or a bow pose. Um, anything that requires this inner um, strengthening of our core uh, without, and, and I would teach them to find the balance. So relax the jaw, you know, relax, have a smile, right? Relax your shoulders. And um, so warrior three is another example where we can um, fly, right? That freedom of action and knowing um, within that we have the strength to keep us there. So any of the poses that require uh, just really pulling into our center is a great one for this uh, chakra. And while we, we express it um, in strengthening our core, the other side of it is how in, in our modern world, uh, we are being told again and again that um, in order to be valued, we have to be successful. Um, in order to be worth anything, anybody's time, we have to kind of do more. It's always do, 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 right? So the other side of this um, chakra is the call to um, beingness and the, the humility of um, doing things not always in the forefront where everyone can see. The, the beauty of working behind the scenes, if you will, and not really doing it for recognition and not necessarily to tell the world this is what I did, but to do it with such grace and um, pure intention is hopefully what we're trying to cultivate here. And so as we 
as we go through these poses, then there's also the other side of it where it is uh, forward bends. And so when we do uh, this sort of surrendering poses, we are truly also cultivating our strength because strength is in vulnerability. Strength is in surrender. And it's not always um, about expressing outwardly. It is um, sort of cultivating that inwardly. Yeah, that's so nice. And from my experience, people who have a strong third chakra also have a natural shine to them. They don't need any makeup. They just glow naturally. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really their confidence shining through, yes? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the next one, the fourth chakra? The fourth chakra is a heart chakra um, known as Anahata in Sanskrit and is represented by um, air. <laughs> to me, this is the most important chakra because this is the bridge between our three physical chakras that we just uh, went through and our three um, ethereal or spiritual chakras, if you will, that we will go through after this. Um, I wonder if you would agree, someone who is balanced in the root sacral and um, solar plexus chakra could very well be um, very successful in this world. But there are two kinds in a way, of successful people, one who is guided by their heart and one who isn't. And the ones that are seen as successful uh, in this modern capitalistic world sometimes may not be doing it out of um, uh, this idea of uh, uh, love or um, a heart that is balanced. And so we really want to cultivate this part of us because when um, when we are truly expressing our gifts in this world with that is guided by our heart, it is a sustainable um, venture, if you will, because it it is going to radiate so bright that other people are going to benefit from it, right and and when we live a life of service, that is when our impact is multiplied. Um, color here is green. And you can imagine it's emerald green. Some have also uh, said it's pink. So pink or green, it is just this color that has this frequency of uh, blissful delight, uh, how we would describe love in, in the many different ways that it expresses itself in our relationships. Ultimately, um, it has to be this, again, um, feeling of safety that we are loved, feeling of um, fun because love, we don't want to take love too seriously. And the feeling of sort of not just we are loved, but everyone deserves to be loved. And so the essential oil I would use here um, is ylang ylang. Ylang ylang has been used for many, many years to find harmony between the masculine and the feminine um, qualities. And there is maybe a, a thought that, that the idea of love is very feminine. However, um, really it's the balance between the two that creates this unconditional love that is so beautiful. So while we have had a lot of, um, you know, yang energy in our society, we're trying to move it more to the, the yin energy of the feminine quality, the nurturing um, of the heart. And so here, 
the essential oil of ylang ylang can help us to um, open our hearts to the idea that we are lovable and the the different parts of us are lovable not just if we express um you know this gentle kind compassionate nurturing part sometimes there is that um you know like like goddess kali right who from unconditional love is going to be very stern and very um cut right through the the um illusions into the point of the matter so that harmony and and coming from that place uh and then expressing it and allowing it to lead us as we um as we live our life is is the idea here so the other essential oil i would choose here is rose and rose is immediately uh, associated with love it is a very precious essential oil because it takes many many uh, pounds hundreds of pounds of petals to distill into a bottle of rose and so it is also considered one of the higher uh, frequency uh, oils. The, the frequency of love um, is much more powerful than the frequency of fear. Uh, love vibrates high, uh, fear vibrates low. And we uh, have shown in, in many of my workshops this idea that when we are um, thinking of someone we love or just really um, expressing the feeling of love within us, we can have as much strength within us even to bend a, a metal spoon. And that is one of the amazing things I show at some of my workshops because they try and they try and they can't. But once they get into a meditative state of accessing the love in their heart, it literally bends um, like soft metal. So try that sometime. Um, the yoga poses here that we practice is one of heart opening. A lot of us have barriers around our heart uh, because of uh, trauma that we experienced in our childhood. When we were uh, rejected or abandoned, when we reached out for love and were not shown it. In my own healing journey, that is uh, very much uh, my practice is to really start to melt away those barriers around my heart. Uh, I grew up with this idea that if I achieved and if I got straight A's, I would be loved. Uh, and so I, um, without any respect for my own body or my own health and wellness it was always about cultivating my mind and getting up there in terms of grades and so my wellness journey has been about coming down from my mind into my heart allowing my heart to guide me so this opening of the heart it can be um, you know the cobra poses the upward dog I love to do partner poses here in uh, sensible yoga because there is that sense of connecting with another heart and so one of the partner poses is uh, somebody laying on their belly on the ground another one um, on the feet on the side of the hips and where the the giver reaches down uh, and opens up the shoulder of the receiver. And uh, so the receiver comes up into a cobra pose and uh, the arms are holding on to the ankles of the giver. And the giver is sitting back almost like in a chair pose. And the metaphor here is um, the receiver just receiving with grace and gratitude. So many of us, find it hard to receive we we consider ourselves as um, people here to give and service the world but then forget about our own selves so practicing the receiving with gratitude 
And then the, the giver has to take care of their own um, health here because when you're reaching down and pulling someone's um, shoulder up, you may be hunching over, you may be compromising your lower back. And so getting them to bend their knees and coming into a, a, a nice chair pose allows them to understand that when they are aligned, they are much more able to give uh, freely, with freedom, with less heartache. Uh, and so it's a beautiful exchange. And there are a few more partner poses I would do. But ultimately, at the end of it, um, I, in, I invite them to look each other in the eye and, and say a heartfelt thank you. And that has almost always uh, become a, a hug and a, a few tears shed. Because just the idea of receiving and giving love is, is something we can practice in our yoga class so that when they come back out to their real life, it becomes more natural for them. And I always remind them that whatever we do on our mat is a metaphor for daily life. So once we start to practice more and more, we are automatically going there uh, with our, our heart uh, without much uh, judgment or, or even uh, thought around it. Yeah, that's so nice. And a lot of people love to be touched by people who have a strong heart chakra because they have these loving and magical hands, right? When the abundance of the heart flows into the arms and then into the hands and you can just feel that magic. Yes. And when they do that partner pose, it's so interesting how naturally, because we, we take a breath and we do it three times, again, for that safety purposes, but naturally, the giver starts to rub down the back of the receiver when they're resting. And um, I give that instruction almost always, but it's also almost always natural for them to go there. And it's beautiful to watch. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear this sigh from the receiver like, oh. <laughs> yeah, feels so good. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, the next one, the fifth chakra. Mm. So the throat chakra, the visuddha, is represented by ether. And so this is a beautiful chakra because it represents our, again, back to the analogy of music, represents the fact that our body is a musical instrument and music heals sound heals. When our throat chakra is blocked, uh, and many of us have felt it in our lifetime, we want to say something, but we feel like there's this golf ball in our throat. We just can't say it, but when we, when we push through and say it, we, we become this mess, like tears start to flow, and uh, then it really starts to release. When we move up the chakras, many times everybody would be like, oh yeah, this is nice, this is good, yeah, I understand it, you know. But once we come to the throat chakra and we start to sing or chant or um, allow ourselves to speak what is vulnerable to us, this is when they say, oh wow, I didn't realize that was all stuck there. I didn't realize that when I said that, it would create this flood of emotions. So the throat chakra is powerful. It is the first of our three spiritual chakras. Um, I'm sure you've heard the statement, you know, the, the pen is mightier than the sword. We have the ability here to either lift someone up or tear them down. And we have so much responsibility here, both to ourselves and to others, to learn what it means to really speak truth with kindness and compassion. Um, and truth is more aligned with honesty and integrity than it is with what we perceive um, that may be different than others. Does that make sense? Because there is this 
very argumentative part of um, you can imagine uh, a sullen teenager. <laughs> so that energy is within us where we want to argue about everything and we say, that is my truth. And no one else understands me but me. And this is why I need to say what I say. And then we become this angry activist. That is not the energy here we're, we're trying to uh, cultivate. We are really saying that, yes, we all see things differently. We all have this, ver this version of truth. But what is honest? What is honest to you when you say, um, when I hear that, I feel this. When I see that, I feel this. So it's never about um, blaming others or um, not taking responsibility for your own feelings, your own reactions, and, and your own, um, I guess, need to say something. So a few days ago, I had an opportunity to really uh, move into my higher self because I was being told by somebody that um, they wanted to work with someone else after uh, we had already invested a lot of time in each other. And I very honestly said, I am very disappointed. However, I see where you're coming from and I let you go with all my well wishes. And I said it with, um, you know, as much authenticity as I could. And the truth is, um, without any expectations of, of anything. And it felt good. And it felt like I was not holding on or clinging on to anything that was not mine to hold on to but I also expressed how I felt about it. Um, but the truth of the matter is she did come back and say, and say that oh, I changed my mind. <laughs> but anyway, but the point is that if we can take responsibility for our own feelings and speak it, but not accuse or gossip or judge with our voice that is just so um, in a way sacred to us, so here I would use, um, in order to affect our physical and, uh, gland, here is the thyroid. And the thyroid is, unfortunately, one of the glands in many of us today that is not functioning very well. Uh, it is being bombarded by um, a lot of uh, stress, uh, environmental toxins, and um, emotional trauma. So myrtle is an essential oil I would use here, and it is amazing for um, just supporting the function of the thyroid and helps us to um, also increase our lung capacity and um, breathing smoothly. So our throat, you know, is, is a very narrow pipe that goes into our lungs. And we want to, um, again, breath work is really important, right, in yoga. So we want to make sure that that channel is always open. Um, and the other essential oil I would choose is eucalyptus. Eucalyptus, again, helps us with our respiratory function and is also very um energetically, it helps us to stay clear of toxins, right? So we want to have a clear voice. Um, that is how we express ourselves. That is how we um, start to realize that what we're saying should be um, a clear channel for divine um, inspiration to reach someone else's ears. So with that, um, these essential oils then keep our thyroid healthy, keep our lungs healthy, 
and we can start to sing our song, be a part of that symphony uh, that is humanity. And um, so the, the yoga poses here are mostly to nurture our neck. And it could be very simply neck stretches, neck uh, movements, bringing everyone's um, attention to how we have so many muscles in our neck. And it really is the most um, flexible joint in our body in that it can move you know, so many different directions and to nurture it because it holds up our head uh, every single day without question. And then we also chant here. We chant any of the different uh, Sanskrit mantras. Sometimes we may have a song playing and uh, chant with that song. Um, or we tone. We, uh, I love to teach sensible yoga with my uh, partner who plays the crystal sound bowls. And so we... we um, tone to the sound of um, the throat chakra, the frequency of that. Uh, and sometimes we have speaking exercises where we have a prompt and ask um, and invite the participants to speak of something close to their heart, something vulnerable, uh, if they're comfortable to share. So that's the throat chakra. And so, so important. Uh, one more thing I want to say about it is, is in relations to the song and the music analogy is the rhythm. So the rhythm of knowing when to speak and when to listen. So many of us want to speak and want to speak our truth and want everyone to hear what we have to say. And we're the teacher and we're the lecturer and, you know, the, the, Beauty of listening is being a pure witness to somebody else's pain, suffering, or joy. And um, that is a lost art. So I don't know if you've ever experienced being on the phone um, and probably maybe 10 years, 20 years ago where the delay was pretty obvious. But then you get into this, this uh, match of who speaks first and you, you just get into this, like you say something and they say something and you pause in both pause. So it's, it's that very um, subtle art of knowing when to speak and when to listen. Mm, yes, that's so beautiful. I love that. And I also have a little story I want to share with my throat chakra. When I was a kid, I loved to sing, but um, I was told several times to stop because people said, oh, please stop, Stephanie, this sounds terrible. And I did stop and I didn't sing for many years anymore because I, feel, I felt so ashamed. And then my voice got so super quiet. I couldn't really speak out loud anymore. And my throat chakra got so weak and then I um, when I was grown up I worked with a singer and she said please let go of that belief everybody can sing and please start singing again and I did and then the power in my throat chakra came back so this is really powerful just go ahead and sing and don't let anybody tell you that you can't yes thank you for sharing that and um I too had that experience because I was so confident in my voice. I auditioned for a choir and was not chosen. And then I was quiet for many years and chose to use musical instruments instead to express my voice. And just six months ago, I joined a choir and it's been so beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so what about the sixth chakra? Mm. So our brow chakra uh, is located uh, in between our eyebrows, sometimes known as the third eye. And if you think about the pineal gland, it's actually um, in the center of our head down on this level. So back in there. And the pineal gland uh, is responsible for um, our circadian rhythm 
producing mel uh, melatonin and helping us sleep and wake. If we were to um, not have a balanced third eye, we would be either very spacey, very dreaming, uh, always dreaming, or we would be completely in our minds, always in our minds, and living in our stories, and believing in um, the truth of facts uh, beyond any other kind of um, metaphor or feeling or knowingness or intuition or inspiration. So that's two extremes. And the balance that we want to get to is to, yes, understand that, that humans have uh, an ability to discover facts and, um, you know, to create, uh, invent uh, machines and, and all of that, but also to understand the other side of it where there's this ability of us to tap into this inner knowingness um, that when we know something, it's just, it's, it's hard to describe. And sometimes there are just no words for it. Our, uh, you know, gift as a human species is really, uh, in a way, language. And language uh, allows our brains to bring into reality what our thoughts are. And so it would be almost comparing a scientific uh, compendium of journals to a uh, collection of poetry. So the two extremes of using language to express um, our reality here on earth uh, can come to some kind of a harmony, I believe, where we, we respect all the knowledge that we have uh, gained as humans, but also be so open uh, and flexible to the idea that we don't know everything and that we um, are con constantly discovering new things. So nothing is set in stone. Nothing is totally fact. What we believe today could be very... Um, different than what we believe uh, in the future because we may have found something out. So from that standpoint, um, that was where I found my worst, uh, I guess, relationship with my previous career as an investment analyst, where I was supposed to be so sure about where the, how much the stock was worth, right, buy or sell. And I've moved away from that world into this, this other world of uh, embracing change, embracing uncertainty, uh, feeling complete trust in who I am and what I know intimately to be my own um, truth, if you will, and also to um understand that in order to um i guess cultivate this part of me there has to be a certain element of magic and that magic is also being totally aware of all the daily miracles that happen that cannot be explained by uh, science or cannot be replicated by science because science is a, a discipline of, of uh, finding repetition in things so that it can be stated as completely true. So the essential oil I would use here, first for the pineal gland, for memory, uh, for the, the physical function is rosemary. When I was going to nutrition school, 
my lecturer said something that has always stuck with me. And he said, just remember rosemary as rose memory. And then you'll know what it's for. So as we age, um, we want to take care of our brains, take care of the function uh, of our brain, the, its ability to remember, its ability to be cognizant. Um, and rosemary is amazing for that. So inhaling that, diffusing that, um, putting that on my brain stem is just uh, something that we can do for um, maintaining this part of us. And then um, frankincense is another one I would use for that dreaming part of me, for that spiritual part of me, for that. Um, Frankincense, by the way, has been researched for its ability to connect the spiritual side of our brains to, um, to connect to the spiritual side of brains and to make it more um, apparent and more um, shows up more in our everyday life. And, and that's part of the reason, I suppose, it is used in some churches as an incense. So I would use frankincense. And so for the, the brow chakra is where we start to sit and meditate in many of my yoga classes. Um, yoga is considered or is interpreted as union, union of the mind, body, and spirit. So as we move and use our breath throughout all the other chakras, we come to our third eye chakra and we have finally moved our body enough so that it will sit still for us and our minds can also um, come to a place of rest. So I love this analogy of our minds as say a pendulum where initially before we start practicing yoga, this pendulum is swinging wide it's going from one end to the other consistently that represents our thoughts. We are just, you know, all over the place. And then as we practice, as we use our breath, as we come into our body, this pendulum starts to swing less and less. But our body is so dynamic. Our mind is so dynamic. It's never going to be completely still. What we're achieving here um, and no, I don't like to use the word achieve, but what we're really uh, coming to here is this slow um, vacillation of that pendulum that is still dynamic, but it's just now an inhale and an exhale, and it's nice and rhythmic and nice and slow. So as we sit and meditate, I usually guide them through um, any different kind of meditation practice. It could be very simply just uh, be aware of the breath. It could also be um, one where we activate our senses and we are listening to what's around us, feeling our um, sit bones on the ground, feeling, uh, sending our sensation to our right toe or our left finger, you know, or it could be a guided vis visualization. And the guided visualizations uh, is somewhat my favorite because it allows people to journey deep into their dreaming part. And now we're aided by, you know, essential oils that actually help us get there. And usually it's in line with the theme of the, the sensible yoga practice of that day. I take them there and they are shown through their own knowingness, what surfaces for them. And it is body awareness, it is uh, tapping into our intuition, tapping into our inspiration. Um, and it is also knowing that whatever visions come up in our head, sure, we can argue that we made it up or whatever, but it is a message for us that only we can know how to interpret. And so I guide them through that. And um, sometimes that's inspired journaling after. 
most of the time, we just then move on to Shavasana for our crown chakra. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. And what about the crown chakra, the seventh chakra? What mm -hmm. is so once they're so intimately connected to their own wise self deep within them, that it guides their every day. The crown chakra, oh, and I didn't tell you, so the third eye is this um, blue, sky blue. The third eye is darker blue. So now crown is um, sometimes violet, sometimes white. And the crown chakra is where we come to this realization that we are beings that are part of a tapestry, if you will, a web. And our own actions uh, do not only um, benefit or, or uh, impact ourselves, but it is a ripple effect that um, others can feel and that realization that we're part of something bigger then becomes this union of ourselves and that bigger energy. So this is where it gets um, to everyone's individual beliefs, but Many people will, after doing the yoga, understand that there is this essence, even if it's the essence coming from the essential oils, which is from the plant kingdom, even that essence, knowing that there is something out there much bigger than just us, connects us to that and ultimately um, then gives us this sort of permission to draw from that energy as we realize we are part of it and to give back to that energy as we realize that whatever we do has an impact. So again, it's, it's this um, infinite cycle of receiving and giving. And if any part of that becomes blocked, if we do too much giving and too little receiving, then it doesn't flow. And if we are um, giving where it's not being, um, it's not in synchronicity and harmony, then we may be giving and it's, it's, it's disharmonious, dissonant, uh, which becomes a little dark and a little gray and just not white light or violet, you know? So just having those images in our mind allows us to understand a little bit our impact every single day when we get up out of bed. How are we uh, showing up? And how are we being responsible in whatever choices we make every single day, knowing that, our choices make a difference in, for instance, uh, somewhere as far away as Hawaii and Germany. When I make a choice here, it may affect you in Germany. When you make a choice in Germany, it may affect me here in Hawaii. Um, and I have no idea where it comes from, but somewhere along the timeline, somebody threw something in the trash or even made that choice to, to drink from it. And it ended up here where today I am walking on it. So this crown chakra is really powerful in, in waking up humanity to our individual responsibilities as we are connected to source energy, to the, the, the karmic timeline, um, to all that we, um, we breathe, we say, we do, you know, how is that contributing to the overall 
um, synergy of our life here on earth. And ultimately, I think with, with my work, it's really about connecting them to this energy so that we start to live a life of reciprocity with Mother Earth. And using the essential oils for this then um, gives them that visceral sense of this is something I'm receiving from Mother Earth. Uh, so that is a, an incredibly powerful synergy I find with using essential oils and yoga. So here um, is our pituitary gland. And pituitary uh, gland is like a master hormonal gland that sends hormones, uh, messengers to all our other glands on how um, we grow. It's also where we get our human growth hormone, how we grow and how we develop. Parts of us need um, some sustenance, what parts of us is, is not doing so well. So it's, it's metaphorically also very relevant in, in us as, as organism, being a part of the organism that's Mother Earth and Mother Earth being a part of the universe as we know it. So I would use Palo Santo here. Palo Santo is an essential oil from, um, and, and I would mention here, uh, the trees, the forests in Ecuador can only be um, harvested from when one has a license. So it's, it's very important to know your source. And so Palo Santo is an essential oil that comes from dead Palo Santo trees that have died naturally, allowed to rot in the forest. Um, and the essential oil peaks uh, after about two years of laying on the forest floor. It is known as the holy wood uh, in, in ancient um, Peruvian uh, and uh, my Incan. Uh, traditions and they use it as a means of tapping into the spiritual world. So I love to use that in Shavasana. In Shavasana is where as I invite the participants to relax into the sacred um, support of the earth that they start to meld and merge into the energies around us, right? They're no longer just themselves. They become this um, union with everything. So Palo Santo, the other um, essential oil I love here is sandalwood. Sandalwood, um, again, helps us to connect spiritually with that part of us. Uh, also helps our pituitary gland. And um, sandalwood is, again, another decimated crop. And so very important to, to make sure we get it from the right um, um, farms and ones that allow um, the reforestation. So sandalwood is interesting. It is a parasite. And when you think about that, um, a parasite is given a, a pretty bad, bad uh, connotation name. But if we were to um, honor and respect the sandalwood plant, we would plant it along with many other native plants around it. And we are actually growing more than just one plant. Uh, true, the, the sandalwood does uh, you know, take nutrients from the plants alongside it, but they grow also together. And they grow together to a point where the, the others become a part of the sandalwood plant. And then um, the sandalwood plant uh, tree survives and the ones around it don't. Um, but there are, you know, various stages of that in the forest. And so it is a thriving forest. Uh, that gives us this idea too about our you know life and death cycle as we connect to our crown chakra knowing that 
death is just as sacred as life as birth um and the the connection between all living beings is neither good nor bad but if we can learn to live together synergistically and honor um how one needs to give to another to receive but ultimately we all thrive together that is also part of the teaching of this chakra wow Bian, thank you so, so very much for these beautiful descriptions of the chakras and the, the essential oils. That was wonderful. <laughs> thank you for taking the time. I know there's so much to go into. It's very much in-depth. And um, I would love to, um, you know, help anyone who wants to understand more uh, if they want to get in touch with me. How can I get in touch with you? What's the easiest way to find you? The easiest way is my website. It's leanderson.com. And there's a contact me uh, section there. You can follow me on Instagram. It's just at Leanne Anderson. Or you can um, follow me on Facebook. It's again, uh, on Facebook, it's at Sensible Yoga. So S-C-E-N-T-S-I-B-L-E -E, Yoga. All right. Leanne, thank you. Thank you so very much for sharing your time with us and your wisdom and it was so much fun talking to you. Thank you so much and many blessings your way. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> many blessings to everyone watching and bye-bye. Thank you.